Uh, I was told that I swear too much. Sounds about right. By whom? By my dad. <laughs> oh, he watched the show. No, he, he said, oh. this is what he said, I accidentally clicked on your link. I don't know how he accidentally did that. And the beginning was like, I, I think I said like, F, I think I said like five F-bombs in a row. And he's like, so I accidentally heard this and you swear a lot. I was like, do I? Do do I? <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. I might I might be self conscious about it this week, but uh hello everybody. Welcome to another episode of the F Word Podcast. This is week four, I believe, of quarantine, correct? Yep. That's about right. Uh I'm joined again with uh, I'm I'm joined again by Vass and Anthony. Anthony are you almost done university? Uh, I, like... I finished yesterday, like the first semester, I guess my first year. I have a final April 22nd, but that's literally it. Like I'm done all my classes yesterday. Nice. Now what are you going to do with yourself? Uh, I don't know. I count, it sounded kind of sexual, but uh, today <laughs> I was just watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine. And now I have a lot more time to focus on the new page. Yeah. And yeah, I'll probably just be doing shit like that. Uh, vast maybe make some content for the IGTV. Oh yeah, oh yeah, okay. Video game okay. stuff now. Uh, Vass, how's your week? Uh, it's pretty good. Uh, I partly what did I start in my off week on Tuesday? Uh, so five days on, five days off, kind of deal from work. So five off right now. Just been watching the heck out of Man in the High Castle. So I finished that uh, up to season four. It was pretty awesome. It was quite good. And I imagine there should be a season five. I don't know if they've been working on it or what the deal is, but I'll be anxiously waiting for that. But it's it's been a good run. Nice. And I started Lost once again. Oh, man. (laughs) Fuck, man. Okay. What is this? Number 15? Oh, way oh past God. 15. I'm probably in the 20s easily. <laughs> isn't it like an 18 or not eight? Like, isn't it like a eight season show, 20 episodes a piece, 45 <laughs> six, minute long? Six season show. And uh, the first three seasons have at least 20 to 24 episodes. Seasons four and five with the writer's strike, I think we're a little bit shorter, like 15. And then season six had about another. 20 i think so yeah oh Let's man go. that's so funny that you're starting it again <laughs> yeah i don't know i just didn't feel like starting anything new uh ozark's on the back burner i just again i just once you start something new like that takes a lot of attention like mad in the high castle to jump into something and one other one you're like okay i need a break i just need a mindless one i already know what's going on and just whatever um but yeah and then playing a little need for speed uh, yeah, we already, I already mentioned to you that you you went on a full five minute breakdown last yeah. week. Yep, uh, I did, and I continue to play much to my despise. I don't know, and I also been getting back into Jedi Fallen Order. Like, so I beat the main story, and now it's just kind of one of those things where you want to just go back and finish, uh, like explore, get all the chests and that kind of stuff. Man, it's a pain in the ass, though. Mm. Uh, because some of them are annoying. Like I just, I did what planet was on it? Oh, Zepho. So uh, yeah, Zepho's it's nice. Hard. It tells you like what, how much you've done on all the areas. And then I had to look up a few of the stupid ones that actually were like in really weird spots. Like you'd have to really be paying attention to what's going on um, or look a little bit closer. So I just got annoyed and I was like, okay, let's look this up. And I end up getting everything done, and yet I'm still shown as 99% uh, explored. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. (laughs) So I look at the database, and then it tells me I'm missing like two two of those echoes, I think, from two sections. I'm like, and I literally went through one of my favorite maps so far, one section, is that um, the, the wreckage, that massive ship. Mm-hmm. That was a great one. I do not know. And I, I just, it just reminded me how um, the Force Awakens started, where she's just, where Ray's just like searching in the chasm of that abandoned ship. It exactly felt like that. And it was really great. Anyways, 
So I went through that thing three times trying to figure out if I missed anything and I just gave up. I was like, hey, I'm out of here. Forget Zepho. <laughs> I'll take the 99. <laughs> so just yeah. leave Suck it at that. Bring from success. Absolutely. Yeah. 99 is good. Uh, yeah, I'm, still, right. I'm still half-assed into Origins, but uh, I've been fucking doing that puzzle, man. Like we're... That Star Wars puzzle is driving Soph and I both together and apart because of how fucking hard it is. And that's my second F-bomb so far, I think. Um, this just shades of black and white everywhere. So lost. And like, I'm finding some pieces, but I'm just keep looking. I'm like, we are so far away. Like, I think there is 15 or 20 stormtrooper faces that are Hello? like, hey. Hello? What? I can hear him fine. What's happening to Vass now? I do not know. Oh. Sorry I don't that. know. What happened to you? Oh, just the the chat on the volume. I hit I hit it off. It was my bad. Technical difficulties, that's all. Oh dear. Uh anyways, long story short, this puzzle is crazy hard. So I haven't been playing too much Origins because of that. And then I've finished watching season four of Money Heist. And I'm actually going to probably record a review uh, for nice. for, se- for season three and four. So I'll probably do that tomorrow because I've got tomorrow off. And then other than that, same dealio. Are you still Animal well, Crossing, I know. Anthony? Uh, Animal Crossing grind has been put on hold. Uh, actually, a lot of my gaming, like I've played maybe two nights this past week. Because I have been binging the ever-living fuck out of Black Mirror. Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen it. It is an amazing show. Like, I remember it was funny because I was watching one episode and I was thinking, like, hey, this would be fine to do, like, a series on and just talk about. And then I remembered when I got my camera, I actually tried doing a series on it. But for some reason, the recording, like, I tried doing a fucking review of the first episode five times. But, like, I think I had a, I don't know if you remember, but I had an issue with the camera was always blurry and I didn't know mm-hmm. how to fix it. So I just eventually gave up because I was like, I've talked about this episode five times for 13 minutes long each time. Like I'm, I'm done, but I've been watching it. And I, that's why I was cutting it so close today. It was, was just finishing up an episode because I have three left and it's such a good show. Like I fucking love it. I don't know. It's just one of those, it's a twilight zone type show. And I want to check out Jordan Peele's version after I finish black mirror but it's just such an interesting show. Like I love how each episode is different, but there's also they're connected somehow. It's not in terms of story wise, but just kind of there's a timeline to the show. And I've noticed a character will show up in one season and then show up in another season, or there'll be, there's this one where uh, there was this black museum, which showed a bunch of like crime, like a, a museum, museum of crime. And it had a bunch of artifacts from the previous seasons and you could see it in the background, like a uh, child killer, which I'm not going like, to go into more detail, but it was like a person from an earlier season. And it's just a really fun show to watch, you know, just gets you thinking, keeps you less bored and just also conveys some more serious topics that you have to kind of look through the dirt and like, Oh, you know, that kind of happened now that's kind of happening or that is happening now, or that happened a couple of years ago, or just stuff like that. It's a really fun show. I'm enjoying it quite a lot. Interesting. Um, yeah, I've passed by it a couple of times. I just haven't clicked on it yet. Uh, speaking of fun shows, I guess, we can start on this one. Uh, you put this on the F Word Podcast Instagram page, which you can find, where Netflix is bringing out the Space Force, which is pretty much like the office in space based on the government... Um, space team that they're putting together i think based on a state space team i believe space yeah uh sixth branch of the united armed forces and it's scheduled for may 29th 2020 uh and it's gone it's got john ralphio in it oh my god i fucking love ben schwartz i saw him and i was immediately sold (laughs) i love this because i saw him on a college humor's jake and amir he played this one guy who always changed his identity and then I saw him in Parks and Recs and Sonic. And I just, I've always loved this man. Like, I just find him so funny. His humor is right up there with mine. See, what's funny about Schwartz is he was on a really good show with Don Cheadle a while back. And I forget what it was called now. What the hell was that show called? I Anyways, can Google if you'd like. 
there were I'm on I'm on my phone right now and I don't know why not, why it's not coming up. But um Don Cheadle. Come on, come on, come on. Anyways, I really disliked him in House of Lies, it's called. Sorry. The show is called House of Lies. It's actually really good. Um I really disliked him in Parks and Rec, and then two days ago I saw a supercut of John Ralphio sayings and I could not help but mm-hmm. crack up. And it was so funny. And it's I immediately kind of, took back my hatred of him. It's weird because like everything a lot of the TV shows he like shows up in, he kind of just seems like plays or he plays the same character. It's always the same, like upbeat, high tempo guy who just kind of says things. And I also noticed in my seventh or eighth or ninth rewatch of Brooklyn Nine Nine that his sister from Parks and Rec is actually uh, one of the Italian mob. Like she's related to the mob, and she's that one guy's mistress in the second mm-hmm. season. Mm-hmm. I'm excited for Space Force, though. It seems I think you know I was thinking, well, Netflix is losing The Office, but now they're getting The Office in space, so it's. I assume it'll be a big hit just because it has Steve Carell in it. And I, I assume it'll just be a funny show. I just hope it doesn't get too political and, you know, rely on the Trump is bad humor and Trump sucks humor because that's just gets tiring after a while. And I just don't find it. Like, I'm not so I don't love the guy, but I just I don't need to be reminded that he sucks every joke like a lot of right. comedians have resulted in the past. Mm hmm. Yeah, no, it looks interesting. I'm still choked as fuck that the office is leaving. That's actually going to be a hit, and I and uh, mm-hmm. NBC is to blame for it, and I will never forgive NBC for it. Hold on, it's leaving Netflix. Yeah, is that old news? And is that- oh yeah. Oh, what the heck? Yeah, man. I think we talked about it on the podcast. We definitely did. Uh, I can't remember. I, I I can't remember. It if was we with did friends. Either. I know we I know we mentioned well, um, the Space Force, but that's it. Mm-hmm. Well, I know it was like the same time Friends was announced was leaving Netflix, The Office was. And I'm like right. 99% sure we talked about Friends. So then like it makes sense we talked about The Office. Yeah. Oh my God, I just have a bunch of voice cracks this whole you show. You do. Real duty. You. Vass sounds like he's Vass sounds like he's got the microphone in his mouth. Oh, it's like it's a full fist away. <laughs> Weird. I, I don't know. I'm sorry. I just to... have a booming voice. No, I don't think it's that. I think you might oh, just okay. have to go to your um, audio settings and then just turn your volume down a bit. But anyways, we're still going to figure this sh- Zoom shit out. Um, yeah, Space Force looks okay. Um, mm-hmm. Vass, you shared the extraction trailer in the, tra- in the chat. I surprisingly really liked it. Oh, I actually, yeah, I, I like it too. Um, obviously, Chris Hemsworth, he's doing great. <laughs> and it's Russo and, Brothers. Uh, I've Oh, it's Russo Brothers too. I didn't know that. They produce- is that the one on uh, Netflix? Yeah, it's coming to Netflix pretty soon. Um, yeah, it was very. I think it was very well done. It looks interesting. There's the right amount of like action and comedy and seriousness and that kind of stuff. So I think I think it'll be a nice little addition. It's it'll be a fun thing. I don't. It's I don't know if you can take it seriously right away, uh, but I think it'll be fun to watch. It's looks Which is super what we're serious all though. For. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's true. It is super serious, though, in the fact that like they're literally this kid is about to get murdered and he has to protect him. Mm-hmm. Just um, like hard topics. Yeah, and then yeah, the like other the one, topic. the other one is that he's got his like center thing, like his huge like fitness center, cent- which is called center on like online yeah. and shit. So he's just jacked as hell. Like he's even oh, yeah, more jacked. Stopped since he did since he, since he transformed for Ragnarok, he hasn't stopped since, and that's what kicked he, everything off. So. He was I'm surprised he's that fit store. after Endgame. Um, <laughs> the first story wasn't that much. Yeah, like he was he was lean and some. He was ripped. I'd say he was not ripped, jacked. man. He was Let's super ripped. Uh, okay, Thor one, it was pretty decent, and the Avengers got progressively better. Uh, the dark world got slightly closer and then of course Ragnarok was just the pinnacle for him like he brought it and he's just that's how he's continued right so no for sure but I mean like in the first Thor you can't say it was decent like he well, I'd say he was shredded but like ripped is like by comparison I'd say it's weird because ripped for me is like Henry Cavill kind of style in Man of Steel like that's well actually See, I would say too. like I don't know 
Thor and Ragnarok was more it was more ripped than Henry Cavill. Yeah, no, Henry Cavill was he's still fucking huge. It was just say yes. that's more of like a bulk, but not like a bad bulk. Yeah. Either way, the guy's been jacked forever. Both of them have been jacked forever. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he was jacked. What happens when you land a superhero movie and get paid to work out seven times a week? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's a good point. That's a goal. That's a dream. Uh, Last thing I have is two things. One, the PS5 controller was released, and and I really like it. And number two is PS5 Mm -hmm. is apparently in trouble. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So those are the two. First, did you guys like the controller? I did. I thought it like everyone was kind of bitching, like, oh, it looks like Xbox. And I'm like, it's a fucking controller. Like, what do you want? It? There's only like such a limited design it can look like. Agreed. Uh, I'm also excited to, I read, I didn't even notice this, but apparently people are worried because there was no headphone jack on the design. Mm-hmm. But Sony said there will be a headphone jack. It's just like in the actual, I don't know, they just didn't have it in the prototype or whatever, but there will be a headphone jack, mm-hmm. which is, you know, good. Apple, take fucking notes. <laughs> yeah, no shit, hey. Um, Vast, do you like it? Yeah, the controller looked good. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing that made it look the closest to uh, Xbox was probably the elongated like handles themselves, because like PS4 has forever been short handle kind of thing, right? Whereas part, Xbox yeah. had the the longer form and a little bit more short and stubby. So the PS5 one still holds its kind of slender look, like it doesn't look as bulky as the Xbox controller, mm-hmm. and Xbox One, the the X Series One actually doesn't change its design very much, other than the D pad. Um, so, like, I mean, PS Five have had the big release, and Xbox already released. It was like, yeah, it's basically the same. We just changed the D pad, and things work a little bit better, kind of thing. Um, whereas I think PS Five actually did a little bit more thought into theirs, and they've had a pretty timeless design. Like, they've had it the same since PS Two for the most part, other than like changing the form a little slightly. Uh, but this is like kind of like a total redesign. So it looks good. Uh, it looks slender. The buttons look, uh, I couldn't I gotta bring it up again, but it, it looked like the buttons were kind of in press. Like the, yeah, it kind of looks like the Switch the controllers were little inset the, into the yeah, controller, you mean? Inset. Yeah, that's it. It looks a little inset. Uh, so I'm not sure how that will be. I doubt that's the case. But... Well, I, mean, I think I... it's just the, like the front on view because it looks yeah. like you can see yeah. the circle around it. So I don't think it's going to be in. Because I don't think there's they had a, a side. Way. No, if you look at it from the there's a side, you can see that it points out. Yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, it is. And, and they're, just, and they're oh, you know what it is? It's clear. Yeah, it's clear. Mm. That's why. They, yeah, they advertise it with clear buttons. So, yeah. yeah, it'll be interesting. More more color variations. I think people like. Oh, I've been seeing like, hella customs. I just my friend just sent me a Goku yeah. one, like literally a minute mm-hmm. ago. Boss Logic was going ham on it. Yeah. But the more I look at it, it's like basically just a Switch Pro controller. Like I'll send it to our chat afterwards, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. or I guess I can just do this quickly and just show you guys. But like, it's not a bad thing. I'm not bashing it. No, no, no. This is the Switch Pro, and I uh, think it, like similar. the Switch Pro feels super fucking nice. Like it's so nice. I think to that hold, looks and it's like light a, as... that's kind of a hybrid between the Xbox and the PS. Oh yeah, hundred well, percent. Also, they use USB C charging, which is nice because oh, that's just an faster. easy way to charge. I already have it for my Switch, so mm-hmm. I can have a long cable. I yeah. um yeah I it looks like PlayStation and Xbox like the PlayStation controller had sex with the original Xbox controller and this is what they got like <laughs> and it was raised by the Switch like that's what it seems like what happened here and I I I don't know I keep staring at this controller it looks so good and it actually looks super comfy and maybe it's mm-hmm. because of like I don't know the fact that the handles are look super smooth but I'm like this lo- already looks like it's going to be really comfortable to hold, which the Xbox One, I think, is still considered one of the most comfortable controllers, isn't it? Oh, it's it's got the, the width to it, right? And you have No, the- no, not just that. I'm saying across the board, fans oh. are just like, between any controller that's come out in a while, Xbox mm-hmm. One is still one of the top controllers out there, right? 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 Correct? Uh, yeah. I know 360 was one of the top. I think Xbox One also was. I have my Xbox One. Ooh, I'm holding this one, and it feels like the Xbox One controller feels super nice, actually. Maybe it wasn't. Well, I haven't had this in a while. The, oh, my it's God. It's beefier setup. Like, it's a lot wider, whereas, mm-hmm. like, when you're playing the PS, you kind of have to, your hands are a little jarred and tightened up differently, whereas the Xbox just sitting comfortably and open, and that's probably why it has a better 
ergonomic design, you know? Yeah. I will say, though, the Switch controller is easily the lightest controller. I know Xbox is heavy because it has batteries in it. I assume that's, like, a primary reason why it's heavier. Yeah, but I still don't I really hope that. the PS4, like, follows a Switch and, like, invests in light controllers because it's just so nice to hold in your hands. Mm -hmm. And this is a weird thing to say, but I'm, I said it. It's a controller. You hold it in your hands, and you're going to be using it for hours on it can end. I mean, it's supposed be taken to be out good. of context, though. Of course, it already has. I mean, I'm not surprised. Uh, I'm not surprised at all. Um, yeah, no, it looks good. The but then the only uh, the issue is, and I got this report. A friend of mine sent it to me from What Culture Gaming that the PS5 has massive heating issues. So. If they've tried to redesign it to add air conditioning, short of adding a window air conditioner with some duct tape at the end of it, it would end up looking very similar to the new Xbox, which is kind of a bummer, but it also makes sense as to why we were supposed to see some footage in February, but didn't. But they released the controllers to, or what, they released it a couple of days ago to be mm -hmm. like, hey, here's something to look at while that's really cool while we try to figure out our shit over here. So that was kind of shitty news. It it's is only because of them trying to figure out how to properly mount a cooling system, essentially. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, it's a, it's essentially the here it is. There's something in it that when the devs try to use it, it overheats. Mm. That's the biggest thing, right? Um, there's somebody from there that's uh, anyone following. What does it say? Maybe overshot and underestimated Microsoft PS5 major fault is that it consistently overheats and suffers hardware failures at an alarming rate. This is down to the power of the tech not being accommodated by the design of the system itself, which has not been created to alleviate this overheating issue. So that's kind of the thing. Oh, perfect. It just gave me the 10-minute warning. Thanks. Well, that's uh, the issue with the PS4 right now is that, like... I don't know if it's all models, but my model, like I know a lot of models do this. I don't know if the newer models have resolved this, but you'll be playing a game for like 20 minutes and then the fan starts going and you can just hear that mm -hmm. like the whole time you're playing. It's not a big issue. It's just though for the new gen console, I'd like them to fix that. So it doesn't sure. sound like my PS4 is about to explode and self-destruct <laughs> any minute. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm hoping that they take their time to like i hope they actually take the time to to make it work instead of just trying to push it out and trying to fix it after and then having to recall because obviously that won't be good for anybody especially them and the thing is like xbox and ps like xbox has always beaten sony essentially has always beaten sony um right out of the gate but then sony sorry xbox fans it just has more better games like bigger games most of the like aside from the switch recently that's been doing very very well it's almost like xbox has been taking a back seat to the playstation and the switch uh well the thing for xbox is that their only notable exclusive game is halo mm -hmm. and their past halos have all dropped the ball and they i think they're making a, i don't know the fifth one i think it's the mm -hmm. fifth one I don't know if that did that already come out. Four, it might have actually four, already. Uh, came six out. ones coming out. Halo Six, twenty twenty. So it comes out sometime this year. Mm -hmm. uh, probably a, like alongside the Xbox. Does the Xbox the new do the new consoles come out this year or next year? Uh, I, think I think they're both it. supposed to come out the same time, isn't it? The like kind of like a console war. Like yeah. Both uh, Except for Sony, they're going to take a while. I think the new Xbox oh, really? might be coming out this year. So like Halo Six might be a ex like launch title for the new xbox unless mm -hmm. it's coming out next year but i think it might be coming out this year yeah. uh, but like xbox like even at launch the xbox one's launch games they fucking sucked like rise was interesting but it sucked yeah. and they i didn't remember the other ones but i just know the the general consensus was that the launch games basically for both consoles sucked but playstation had a bit better ones because mm -hmm. i don't know if they had an uncharted title at launch i think yeah, they I might have didn't they I don't remember. I, I want to say one of the years, maybe it was the PS1 had it. I don't remember. But I don't know. Like they, the thing was, is because of Halo, at least in the first one, there was, there was a lot of hype around the Xbox mm -hmm. because of the, that first, those first three Halos. Like that would beat out Sony in the beginning, but then over the long run, it just, 
Sony would just crush it. Like all the developers that are uh, work and like seem to like to work with Sony a lot. I was just listening to like a lot of interviews with Corey Ball Barlog, who was a creative director for God of War, and mm-hmm. uh, he was saying how much like Sony pretty much gives them what they want. It's he's like it's as close to a blank check as you can get, which and is good usually, to hear from developers. Well, lots of their exclusives like pay out. Like I saw that Last of Us two footage you sent, and it literally sold me uh i haven't bought the last of us one yet but i've tried playing it twice i haven't got past the first couple missions once but like seeing that gameplay it's like okay that looks like something i'd love to play i'm sure once i get over that hump that i've just been hitting in the last of us one i'll actually really like the game because there's no doubt in my mind i'd enjoy the game it's just i don't know what it is but it made me want to go back and just buy that game just because that exclusive looked so good and that's the thing with sony uh, it can't like no company can touch Nintendo for exclusives. But in my mind, the tier rank goes Nintendo, Sony, Microsoft. Mm-hmm. Now, where in the past, mm-hmm. like for Xbox 360, it would have been the other way around with Nintendo, Xbox, Sony. And you've always put Nintendo on top, eh? Well, Nintendo like, for exclusive games, got yeah. The... Oh yeah. yeah. I think the Mario and Zelda—that's a win right there. <laughs> Smash Bros, Mario Kart, like it's just that's top tier. Gotcha. Well, yeah, mm. that's a fair point. That's not uh, you're not wrong on that one. Vass, you're a big Xbox guy. Like you've always been more into Xbox, right? Uh, yeah, I dabble in both. Like I, but yeah, I have I have committed more to Xbox games for the most part. Like the Halos have really drawn me in because those are really good. Um, yeah. Well, I remember when the when you had moved away, you always had the PS4, so I I had the Xbox, so I got used to the Xbox more than anything. Um, but now I have both and it's like, it's tough. Like, where do you, where do you commit to? Do you play on PS4? Cause the majority of people do play PS4. Um, but there's, uh, a certain few that, you know, play Xbox still. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, definitely gravitated towards the PlayStation mostly because of the type of games that are there. Like I'm not a first person shooter type of person. So Halo, like I played Halo and it was it was fun, but it just didn't grab me as much as, let's say, Uncharted did. Um, yeah. You know, Uncharted really, I was like, damn, like this is, as a movie person, I was like, mm-hmm. holy crap, like mm-hmm. this is what games could be like. They're literally yeah. movies, right? And and the more, most of the games that I play are very, very cinematic in nature, like extremely oh, yeah. cinematic mm-hmm. in nature. Um, and again, like my buddy just messaged me. He's like, have you ever played God of War? I was like, are you serious? And so <laughs> what do he's you never, well, he's never <laughs> played the originals. And yeah, so okay. he told me he just finished this new one. And I was like, oh man. So I, I explained the first three in like, you know, a full write up. Okay. And he was like, oh my God. I'm like, yeah, man. Like you have no idea how big this, this franchise and how, how deep it runs. Um, Should have done a Luis though. <laughs> I, I didn't have, I didn't have enough people. Um, but the other thing is, is like, so I'm going back and I'm like, re, I'm definitely going to play that game again because that is perfection in my eyes. That God of War game, just like unbelievably stunning, perfectly paced, everything about it. Just, it's just so awesome. Like, and it's so great, and and I've been hearing, I've been listening to a lot of the the the, the Corey Ball bar log talk about it, and other people talking about it back like two years ago, right? I'm like, yeah, I'm definitely playing this game again right away as soon as I'm done with Origins. It's so good. I I wanted to go back to God of War because I don't know what it was. I just think I had, like got busy with football in school when I came out. But I remember like I remember really liking it, and then I just kind of stopped playing it. And then I just kind of never came back to it. But I just, that new one, like it looked great. It felt great. It was fun as fuck. There would be a lot of games I'll be enjoying this uh, Mm -hmm. break from school and break from going outside and living my life. Yeah. Um, Before we go, we have about two minutes left. Uh, We hit the shout out jackpot. Anthony, do you want to tell us what the hell happened in like 24 hours? So basically, uh, I was talking to... Uh, some a fact page called Kid Kid Cassidy Films, and I had been putting a bit of money into our posts just to kind of get the ball rolling a bit. Because when you start from zero followers on Instagram, it's very hard to get live people and not just Riverdale fan accounts bitching and moaning that they want follows. Uh, so Kid Cassidy Films with a 
guy I didn't actually know, but I'd always saw see his kind of content on my Explore feed when I had Entertain Facts. And he was a rival. Like, he was not a rival in that sense where, like, I disliked him, but, like, he was competing fact page for the same genre. Like, I didn't ever message out to him or beef with him. It was just one of those things in my head. Uh, but I followed him on this account, and I saw he was doing shout-outs. I figured, okay, if I'm putting, you know, $5 in through Instagram and getting, like, three follows, I wonder how much I could get through this guy who has just under 100000 and he offered $15 for not only a shout out on his main page with under uh, just under 100,000 but his second page with like 44. So we got a shout out, jumped from 76 followers to currently 995. People are loving our content, they're responding to us. Like we're already starting our fucking like we're already building up a community just based like in interactions and people liking what we do. So yeah, we got the ball rolling and now we should be on pace to get to where we want to go yeah there's like five left for a thousand which mm-hmm. is pretty awesome no that was huge i did we not hit the milestone coming. of 100 and just under 1000 and literally a day perfect so yeah make sure you guys head over to the f4 podcast uh, instagram to get us over that thousand hump i think there's three or four people left uh nice work anthony on getting that happening um and we're gonna wrap this up because we probably only have about 45 seconds so uh yeah that's it thanks again for another week everybody and uh we'll catch you next week um uh, make sure you're following like i said at, at the f word podcast on instagram you can find me on twitter at the f words g you can email us at the f word podcast at gmail.com and you can check out the lazy canadian on instagram as well and our facebook Facebook. I'm G. It's your boy Anthony. It's Vass. And we're out. (laughs) 